Morning everyone, thanks for dropping by the channel today. Got a great episode for you. We're gonna be talking about the Fujifilm XS10. Now the XS10, I did some short videos on it a while back when it first came out. A friend of mine had got it and I said, oh, can I borrow it for a day? That's all I really got it for and I didn't really discover a lot about the camera. But I've had it now for about two weeks and I've been shooting with it quite a bit and I've gotten to know it quite well. And there's some things I really like about this camera. And we're gonna go over those things in this episode. Some things that I really like about this camera are the custom settings here. There's only four of them, but they're wide ranging. You can do an awful lot with these things. And I'm gonna show you that right now and go over a little bit about what I've done. I've set the custom settings up for my normal shooting conditions, which are landscape, and documentary and uh, let's see straight manual and also i've set it up for film simulation bracket and i think that's kind of cool is i can just set this on what i've set it on custom function for and it's set up for me to go just go shoot jpegs i really like that now the interesting thing is i've also got this camera set up so that i can change any of those settings anytime i want one when i'm in that custom setting and it will save it for me. It won't revert back to what I save it, saved it as at the very beginning, which is also another great function of this camera. So let's go over how I set up the custom settings on the X-S10. The first one I'm going to do is the landscape setting that I have for custom setting number one. I've got it set to raw. My film simulation doesn't really matter. It's just what I'm seeing in my viewfinder. So we're going to go past all of that in the IQ setting. Auto balance, I'm going to leave it auto because it's all raw anyway. And we're going to go to the next thing is going to be AF, MF. And really all I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure it's single point and also AFS. And here we're going to go to self timer. As you can see, I can turn it on and set it for two seconds and leave it there. Save self timer setting. I leave that at on. This is all new to Fuji. This is great. Now we go back down through here. We're going to go down to uh, IS mode. And I'm going to turn this off because I'll be mostly putting my camera on a tripod. And I'm leaving my ISO at 400. And excuse me, I'm changing my ISO to 160, not 400. Then I'm going to go back into the IQ setting and I'm going to go all the way down to the third page. I'm going to go to edit, save custom setting, save current settings. Now I've already labeled this landscape. I'm just going to go in here and hit OK and it will save everything the way I want it. And then I can go to edit custom name as well. Now by pressing the Q button, I can see all of my settings for landscape shooting mode. Uh, M. 160 ISO, raw, AFS, AF point, and everything is normal. And even the two second timer will be left on. Now, if I want to make any changes here, after I've made the change, I can long press the Q button and the edit save custom menu will come up and it will save it for me. So let's see how I've set up my C2 or documentary style. And that's an aperture priority, AFS, AF single point, raw and JPEG. ISO 400, classic chrome simulation at plus two color, and I have face detection turned off. Let's look at C4, my film simulation bracket. I've got it set at aperture priority, AFS, single point, and fine JPEG and ISO auto two. And of course, everything else is the same basically, but I've added color plus two for everything. As you can see, the film simulation is stuck at standard because it's a bracket of three of them. So there's a lot of things to like about the XS10. I really like it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and shoot some of my normal situations with these custom settings and show you some pictures that I've made with it. And I think you'll like what I get. Um, you know, it's, it's my usual fare. It's my usual things like lobster traps and um, buoys and things like that because this time of year that's all there is to shoot because there's not much landscape to do especially around here so off we go this is kind of an interesting situation here we've got some old wooden lobster traps 
mixed in with some weeds and some uh, some new ones, new types of ones, you know, metal ones. So I'm gonna try a bunch of different things, but I'm gonna start off with my normal, which is um, I'm gonna shoot some JPEG bracket, I mean some uh, film simulation bracket because of these right here, because I wanna get some black and white. So I'm gonna go to my custom function four and uh, see what I get. Kind of interesting, I will say that. And I'm using, I'm using the 16 to 80 here because it's just what I use a lot. And uh, it's also set, my camera is also set with that custom four setting. I have it set to uh, aperture priority. So there's one, one way of looking at it. Right now shooting at F8. Gives me shutter speed of 105 at ISO 320. Some really interesting shots here. So the first simulation here is classic neg, and man does it look like it. Wow, I'm impressed with this. This is pretty pretty nice uh, simulation of classic negative film. The next one is Velvia, and as you can see, everything is a lot more brilliant. The reds and yellows <clears throat> are really coming out. And the next one is Acros plus red, and it's not nearly as nice. I was expecting a little bit more. So I'm also going to shoot this on my custom two setting, which is a um, it's an aperture priority documentary style thing. This will enable me to uh, use other methods of uh, getting a black and white shot out of this. Also shooting an F8 again, which narrows my depth of field a little bit at 24. So that's an interesting shot. This is my normal classic chrome plus two color simulation. And it looks a lot like the classic Meg simulation. The next one is my raw conversion, where I have used the Osteosoft profile inside Lightroom. This is really interesting. If I can get down a little bit lower, I might never get back up again. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'll take another one on custom function two, or excuse me, custom two, which will give me a raw file out of this. Very interesting. Also an interesting shot here, showing all these traps like this. These are all beat, kind of, but it also shows the waterfront. Unfortunately, it shows all that up there, too. Now, the only thing that I really have grown to dislike on this camera is the, the um, flippy screen. I really don't like it at all. It's good for doing vlogging stuff. That's fine, but not for this. I really don't like it, but I'd like to get down nice and low like this and be able to make a shot.
which where I went on C2, which is my, I want to underexpose this a third of a stop. And that's a JPEG in raw at the same time. Now the other thing that I like about this camera is, is that Fuji has finally addressed one of the pet peeves of all Fujifilm photographers, and that is to be able to save your self-timer. <laughs> you know, it only lasts a couple of seconds or, you know, a minute or whatever it is. But now you can save it. You can leave it on if you want, which is great. Because I'm in my landscape mode in um, C1, which is why I've got C1 set for, I've got the two-second timer. It's always on. Now I can go in and change that, which is really kind of interesting as well. But so far, you know, I really like this little camera and it works very well with this 16 to 80. Got some interesting shots down here. Oh, and by the way, if you wouldn't mind, please give me a comment, hit the like button, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. But you know what? We're going to go around and see if we can find some more interesting shots here because I can see them right now. There's a couple over here that are kind of cool. And this 16 to 80 on this camera works really well. It's a very nice setup. It's very much like the, um, the 18 to 55. 18 to 55 is smaller, of course, but if you're, I'm telling you, what's, what's the ultimate setup here? The ultimate setup for this particular camera is gonna be the 16 to 80 and the 70 to 300, if you can find one. So let's go take some more pictures. It'll be fun. So here's an interesting shot here little flower it's amazing how close you can get with the 16 to 80 Now I threw in these last group of photographs here, um, not because the image is great, but the simulation here, the classic neg is beautiful. I mean, it looks just like it. And Velvia, of course, it looks like Velvia. And the next one is a really great example of Acros plus red. Um, I really like the way it came out. But the classic neg one looks just like a classic neg. It's amazing to me. And of course, the next two here are just a little bit different. My classic chrome plus two color. And then, of course, the raw conversion, uh, which is coming up next. So of all the images that I've shown you, I tend to like the raw conversions with the Ostia Soft used the best. Although they all have different qualities, uh, the classic neg ones look really great. I, didn't, I did not expect that at all. So I've really enjoyed working with this little XS10. It's a great little camera. And if you're hiking, you know, just out and about town, boy, it's a great setup to have. Um, I'm using it with the 16 to 80 here because that's my favorite lens. Uh, but you know what? 18 to 55, as I've said before, probably just as good a choice. I thank Fujifilm North America for letting me use it. It's uh, been a great experience. Uh, the last time I used it, I only had it for a day, so I didn't get to really experiment with it much. And I've still got some more experimenting to do. I want to do some video with it. I haven't done any really, haven't really done any video with it. So um, stay tuned for the next one. We're probably going to do maybe another one, maybe another one after that, maybe three total. So uh, hey, it's a great camera. I suggest you try it out if you can.
So that's it for this week, and we'll catch you next time.